Thank you all for being here this evening. Today is Monday, September 19th, 2022. The time is 6 p.m. We are going to begin at this time. At this time, we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Council Member Mendoza? Here. Council Member Neal? Here. Council Member Hughes? Council Member Hughes did call in and say she was unable to attend this evening. Thank you. Council Member Rodriguez? Here. Council Member Anderson? Here. Vice Mayor Cortez? Here. I'm sorry, I was trying to figure out what that noise is. Aaron has it. It sounds like some feedback from the speakers. Maybe? Sorry. And Mayor Walter is here. At this time, we're going to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the moment of silence. At this time, we'll have our first call to the public. Ms. Garcia, is there anybody who wishes to speak at this time? I did not receive any slips tonight, Mayor, and I do not see any hands showing online. All right, we will have a second call to the public at the end of the meeting. At this time, we'll close the first call to the public. At this time, I need a motion to adjourn to the Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District Number One Special Meeting. I make a motion to adjourn to the Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District Number One Special Meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. And that motion carries. Item one, CV 2019-012347. WHM Merrill Ranch Investments LLC, a Delaware Limited Liability Company, Merrill Ranch Owners Agent LLC, an Arizona Limited Liability Company, Roadrunner Resorts LLC, an Arizona Limited Liability Company, CMR Casa Grande LLC, an Arizona Limited Liability Company, Plaintiffs versus Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District Number One defendant including Appellette and other related proceedings. At this time, I will turn it over. Mayor, this item, item number three, item number C is there, is if the council would like to go into an executive session prior to voting on item E under new business. If council does not feel like they need to go into executive session, we may proceed with the motion. Council, does anybody need to go into executive session at this time? I see no such movement. Then we can go to new business and, and entertain a motion. Okay, first we do need to adjourn from Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District number one. No. You need to, you, you've made a motion. You need to make a motion. You've already got a motion to adjourn two and you did not enter into executive session so you still are in Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District number one. So you may entertain item number E. Okay, entertaining item number E, which is one. MRCFD one, resolution number 145-22. This is discussion and possible action of a resolution of the Board of Directors of Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District number one, approving and authorizing the consent of the district to assign and assumption of district development, financing, participation, waiver, and intergovernmental agreement. Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District number one approving and authorizing the execution and delivery of a first non-assessment bond related to the amendment to district development, financing, participation, waiver, and intergovernmental agreement. Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District Number 1 and approving authority, the execution of settlement agreement and release among the town of Florence. 
Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District No. 1, CMR Casa Grande LLC Roadrunner Resorts, WHM Merrill Ranch Investments LLC, Merrill Ranch Owners Agents LLC, Pulte Development Corporation and Pulte Home Company LLC, declaring an emergency with an immediate effective date. At this time, I'll turn it over and we shall see if there are any other questions or comments regarding this item. Our district attorney, Kathy Bowman, is supposed to be here tonight. She's not here yet, so I'll turn it over to our town attorney, Cliff Matthijs. Just briefly, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council, <clears throat> this item resolves ongoing litigation uh, by the Merrill entities against the district. Uh, as in your packet, there are three documents that the district and the town will be consenting for, and there's a later item under new business for the town that is related to the same transaction. Thank you. Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding this agenda item? Hello, Ms. Bowman, how are you this evening? I thought I was calling in today, so I apologize. That is all right. Town attorney presented the item. Did you have anything that you wanted to add at this time? Just that I appreciate the work of everybody at the town and the district and the council in um, accomplishing what was a major feat. Thank you. All right, if there are no questions or comments at this time, we need a motion by the board. I make a motion that we adopt uh, resolution number 145-22 as read by the mayor. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. And that motion carries unanimously. We need a motion to adjourn from Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District to number one special meeting. Make a motion we adjourn from Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District number one special meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. And that motion carries. Item eight is our presentations. What? <laughs> what? The camera, the camera just saw. zoomed in. <laughs> uh, I apologize, there's so many legal documents. I'm just scrolling and so I can open up the next agenda item. Got it. All right, so 8A is our presentations, and the presentation is for the Outstanding Employee Recognition Program Award. This evening we are going to be presenting Mr. Michael Groves for his outstanding contributions to our organization and celebrate his achievements. Ms. Garcia, could you give me the printed paper so I can read it down there to Mr. Groves? Yes. Thank you. All right, if council would like to come down and Mr. Groves, would you like to come up at this time, please? Thank you for being here this evening. How are you? All right, a little bit of background on this program while our council is joining us. So we have an employee incentives committee and with this committee, there are nominations that are received from all of the employees within the town of Florence. They nominate their peers to receive this award. They discuss all of the nominations that come in and they select a winner each month. And the winner will receive a $75 gift certificate to any business of his or her choosing in the town of Florence. So you get to support local business as well. So I wanna share your nomination. 
Michael Groves goes above and beyond to ensure our town looks the best for holidays, working countless hours, ensuring everything is perfect. Michael also organizes and designs our annual 4th of July fireworks display. He always ensures our fireworks show is one to brag about and one that will make everyone from the age of 1 to 100 say, ooh, ah. He fills in everywhere needed, never complains, and just gets the job done. I have enjoyed each and every one of my interactions with Michael. It is stuff like him that reminds me of how dedicated our staff is to the town and its success. So, you also have a certificate of excellence that we would like to present to you. Would you like to share a few words? <laughs> I'm not one for attention, but eh, I guess after 11 and a half years, it's okay. <laughs> As a born and raised resident, I always put my 100% in everything I do. If it's fixing irrigation, keeping our aquatic center water clean and safe to decorating downtown, I always put everything into it. And don't know what to say besides thank you. <laughs> Item 8B is acknowledgement of the Town of Florence receiving the 2021 Impact Award. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Lisa Garcia. Mayor and members of council, I think you may be aware that almost every Friday that you can see a blood drive van or a bus that's out in the Town of Florence parking lot. Um, Trish Buchanan um, does arrange that and works with them. And our goal was to have 11 people give blood a month and you can see that the report shows that we had 96 they sent us a award and this is the award that will be on the front counter of town hall and they ask us to keep up the good work to send that message and to encourage our residents to come in and give blood and help save lives so we're out here today talking about our award and trying to encourage everyone who works for the town of florence lives in the town of florence does business in the town of florence to come on in and give blood at one of our blood drives so thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Trish, for always setting that up for us. Item nine is consent. All items on the consent agenda will be handled by a single vote as part of the consent agenda unless a council member or a member of the public objects at the time the agenda item is called. Item A is approval of the emergency and base station agreement between Stewart Mountain Vista Hospital and the Town of Florence to provide advanced life support and basic life support care and services by the Florence Fire Department. Item B, authorization to publish notice of intent to increase rates and advertise the required public hearing. Item C, accept the register of demands ending August 31st, 
2022 in the amount of $3,456,975.41. Item D, approval of the Town Council meeting minutes July 11th and July 18th, 2022. Item E, receive and file the District Advisory Commission for June 29th and July 27th, 2022. Is there anybody that would like any item removed at this time? Seeing no such motion, we need a, or seeing no such motion, we need a motion. I make a motion we approve the consent agenda as read. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item 10 is new business. A. Discussion and possible action on changing the regular day of the week. Town Council meets. Council Member Mendoza. I'm going to, at this time, read, man, I'm just turning a page a second. Actually, I'm just going to turn it over to Council Member Mendoza. Mayor, may I make a brief comment about the documents that I prepared? Yes, you may. So what you have before you, you have three separate documents and all three documents are required if council chooses to change the date. The first one is an ordinance and that's where within code we state what our regular meetings are. The second one is where we advertise to the public and put on our bulletin boards at what date at the council meets and what date the board and commission meets. The third one is the rules of procedure. And in the rules of procedure, you notice that we did strike out that council will go dark the first Monday in July. And that is because that's budget session and we've actually never been able to go dark because you have your TNT requirements for public hearings during those meetings. So that sums it up and I will turn it over to Council Member Mendoza. Thank you. Thank you. Well, my main reason for moving the date is because um, we usually get our information on a Friday evening and I've got to spend all weekend trying to get um, all my questions answered or do whatever research I have to do and then we don't have very much time on a Monday to do it. Um, from the time I get off of work and then before the council meeting begins, that's about the only time that I can have questions answered if I need them answered, um, if I haven't found uh, the research that I was doing. So um, that's my main reason for, for wanting this. Perfect. So just prior to the meeting, I had actually um, asked Council Member Mendoza just the reasoning behind wanting to change Prior to the meeting, I looked at other municipalities around us in regards to the days that they meet, the times that they meet, and when their agenda is put out. And then understanding that the reason was, you know, the agenda is not being posted until, you know, Friday, that does leave a short window to get questions and comments answered ahead of time. One thing that I gleaned in calling other municipalities and talking with their mayors and vice mayors over the past weekend, because our agenda came out Friday, was Queen Creek, for example, they meet on Wednesdays, but their agenda is already out a week ahead of time. So I think that, and I'm hearing from our public as well, if we could have that planning and preparation to have our agenda out a week ahead of time, that would alleviate, you know, council's need for, you know, sacrificing over the weekend, spending Monday trying to get the questions answered. And that would allow us to keep a consistent in the community of meeting on Mondays. I can remember when I first started on council, maybe one person would show up to our meetings. And I'm looking before us this evening and I see a former mayor in our audience. I see current elected council members that will be seated in our audience and participating online. And I want to thank everybody for being so involved and for stepping forward. So is that something that we could do where we could put our agendas out earlier? Anything is possible, but let's speak to this particular meeting. 
and let's speak to what happened at this meeting. Between Monday and Friday on this meeting, because we were entering into negotiations, and I have both of my lovely attorneys here who um, were diligent in the process. I think they must have done 36 um, different amendments during that time frame. And realistically, we did not get that end product until 415 and um, to turn around and post an agenda and have it up by 506. That is amazing to be able to accomplish all of that and that was underneath the requirements of the court that we do that so that this can proceed. So certain times, as long as we understand that there are always going to be circumstances to where staff will put out a packet that is within the law the law states that you have to do it 24 hours prior to your meeting, and at times there's a reason why we're hitting those those marks, because items are so important to the citizens, to the residents, and saving money that we don't have that extra time in between. Two potential solutions to that could be either, and correct me if I'm wrong, an addended agenda, or in a case where we have something like a major, like litigation settling a special meeting as well yes and I would love to have a meeting every single Monday if that's what council so chooses because um, in, in, in September you do have a meeting scheduled for every Monday in September so I'm all about meetings um, this was not brought up by staff this was brought up by a council member seconded by another council member we did all the work necessary for what other date council would choose because as you adopted tonight um, the finance department does have a public notice to put to the street that says in 60 days we're going to have a public hearing to talk about our rates, our water and our sewer rates. So what staff is looking for is whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday or Friday, we need to understand what meeting date we're going to post so we can get our notices out properly. And we work for council so whatever date council says we're coming to meet, that's when we're coming. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Go ahead. I, I think you captured a lot of my sentiments um, as well as far as I do agree that we need to have our agendas out earlier. If we need to have an addendum to that agenda, then that's great. Um, I think at this point we have great public participation and I would hate to see um, confusion or on when we're meeting um, created since we have created this pattern. Um, also, we have newly seated council that will be coming on, so I feel that changing our date at this particular time um, would not be doing justice to their voice, considering that they ran thinking that the um, time was going to be on a Monday, and I think that it would be best if that were to be discussed, that they would also be seated on council at that point. Um, so at this point, I'm going to ask that we table this item um, until they are seated and it possibly comes back. Uh, and then also that we do request that the agendas come out a week ahead of time. Just myself, I'm sorry, and Vice Mayor, you also signaled to talk as well. Go ahead, Ms. Garcia. I want to go back and say that a week ahead of time, a lot of times if we're doing bids and due diligence to get things out, that um, there will be there, there has a possibility of being delayed. Um, addendums to agendas are fine, but when you have your citizens going online and constantly checking, then they have to check each and every addendum to be able to find out. And that is a big source of contention for other communities because there are citizens who feel like they're, they're items that are slipped on at the last minute on an addendum after it's been reviewed. So I just wanna make sure that if we're going a week in advance or three days in advance or what that timeline would be because I want to make sure we're putting the best packet out and we are giving the citizens the knowledge to know when the last day is that we're posting and that changes are making we're making so I, I would I would want to state that okay go ahead she was just responding to her question directly 
I, and again, that is something that I'm flexible with, but I don't feel that we should be changing the date um, in which we meet until the new council is seated, as well as have public input if that's something we're going to be discussing. Um, since we do have a lot of public participation at this point, I don't feel it's doing justice to s switch the date without having their input as well. Um, we value their opinion and appreciate them being here. Uh, so I think that to do justice to everybody, we should table that until those uh, new key players on council are also in place and that the public has had time to review those items. And Vice Mayor? Uh, so I'll make a couple points. Um, as far as public participation, I don't think it matters what day you have the meeting. Um, if the public wants to be here, they'll be here. I think Mondays is a hard day for a lot of people because it is a catch-up day um, at their jobs and typically the beginning of the week. So it is probably one of the hardest days for people to meet um, and make meetings. As far as reference to our council members that will be coming on at the end of the year, um, just in case you didn't know this, there is no guarantee on when any of your meetings will be. Your council meeting is the only guaranteed day that you have because you will be assigned committees and boards that you will be a part of and those meetings don't happen on Mondays, they happen on different days. So anytime someone has ever asked me about council, it's up in the air what day you'll be here. You don't have just two meetings a month. You can be here three times a week for an entire month. So um, I don't think, for me, uh, it's not that I'm not taking them into consideration. I feel that if you joined council thinking you would only be here two Mondays a month, you were misled and you are mistaken because you will be here many more days than that. As Ms. Garcia just stated, we have a meeting every Monday in the month of September. So that right there just showed you that we don't only meet two days, two days out of the month, we meet many, many more days and depending on what committees you're on, you can meet a lot more than that and depending on how dedicated and how motivated you are. As far as when the agenda should come out, um, we had in a previous session asked for our agenda to be published on Thursdays so that we had more time to look at it and that for whatever reason never happened um, and we're starting to get them, we've been getting them on Fridays. Fridays I agree with uh, council member that it is not enough time. It's not enough time for us and it's not enough time for staff. There is a lot that happens between when that agenda is put out and when the meeting happens and if it's on a Thursday it's still not enough time but I don't know how Queen Creek is doing there's a week in advance because so much happens after they published their agenda that I don't see how they're doing that because there are numbers that literally come in last minute and you have to wait for them and so I don't I don't I'm not in Queen Creek so I don't know how they do their business I would be um, interested in myself calling the other mayors that the mayor says she talked to and asking them how they get their agendas out um, that far in advance but I would definitely support moving the meeting to a different day just to make all of our lives a little more simpler in the hecticness of Mondays. Mondays is typically a very busy day for our staff and for most of us that work. It, it is a very busy day, so a Tuesday or a Wednesday would probably be easier for all of us because we, we've dealt with everything that happened over the weekend and a lot happens over the weekend and I don't think our participation in residents will go down. Are there any other council members? Council Member Neal. I believe that as far as new council coming on, um, you must realize that you've made a commitment to Florence. I missed a lot of things with my children and my family because I'm here on Mondays. And I didn't bat an eye because I made a commitment to Florence when I got elected. So moving the, moving the meeting is, is it's gonna benefit people on this council. I'm pretty sure there's people in the public that it'll benefit. I mean, they have the ability to come to the meeting or watch it online where we have to be here. Tuesdays are just much easier for me. I made that commitment and I'll be here, yeah, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but if it's easier on Tuesday, I'll be here on Tuesday. Any other members have anything to say? 
One aspect that I just want to bring forward to in the community, and we do have a lady in the community that spoke to us a little bit before the meeting, talking about our youth. And I find it amazing that you're here this evening because one of the items I wanted to bring up in closing comments has to do with having our youth reactivated. We had a very active you know, youth council, Florence Youth Group, COVID time came and everything shut down. When I look at what's going on with our youth and their calendars, I do know that there are a lot of events that are, occur on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, at K-8 level, that's when all of their games are played. At high school level, that's when their games are played as well. So in hearing a movement from you know a Monday to another day, I think a Wednesday could be a possibility, but I'd like to know if it could work with everybody's schedule on our current council. And I didn't hear anything from our newly electeds in regards to if it works or not, so I'm assuming it will. I'm just not sure. So I wanted to pitch that out there. Are you asking us for? Oh, yeah, Wednesdays would work fine uh, for, for me. Tuesday, like I said, Mondays I just feel like are such a, a busy, stressful day for most of us that any other day would work better than a Monday. Personally, I'm still in opposition of changing it without having new council appointed, without having the public having time to make comments. It looks like there's some comments on the crowd, but I'm still opposed. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, uh, Council Members. Uh, I'm Jose Maldonado, 6606 West Georgetown Way, Florence, Arizona. Um, and I'm one of the new incoming Council Members. Um, I don't think it really matters to me, per se, when we meet up. Um, I do have many other hats. Mondays, per se, work for me because my other meetings are usually on Tuesdays and some Wednesdays, but it, it doesn't matter to me per se. Um, I think just the biggest thing is for me is I, I want to hit the ground running and, and do what I have to do. And I understand going out there and going to other meetings is, is going to be part of it. So, and I'm, I'm pretty sure my, my uh, fellow uh, incoming council member, uh, Nicole Bocciletto, is also on the same boat as me. So I, I, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, I was just discussing with my wife about Thursday and then kind of uh, vice mayor kind of hit it on the head and you know if it can do it on a Thursday or maybe a Wednesday but having that extra day I think will help for that research and then getting a hold of people so that's just my two cents thank you all right thank you ma'am I'd like to ask Nicole Bucciolato if she has anything that she would like to say at this time Can you hear us, Nicole? Hello? Hello. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you now. OK. Do you know why we unmuted you? Yeah, it's kind of hard to hear you guys today, though. Actually, I'm struggling to hear you guys. That's I kind of hear the gist of it on the day. Which day? Yes. Um, either one worked for me. Um, I think it makes kind of sense to go to Tuesdays just because so many holidays fall on Mondays, but whatever is fine with me. I'm, I'm flexible. Do Wednesdays work for you? Wednesdays would be a little harder. Um, but Mondays and Tuesdays are pretty open. Any of, any of the three would work, but. Okay, so Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday work for you? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. Thank you. No and, problem. And then also, just so 
both Nicole Buccellato and Jose Maldonado are aware since Vice Mayor had referenced the boards and commissions. Council has input as to what boards and commissions they want to serve on. And a lot of times they'll take into consideration their background, their interests. Sometimes it does also take into play what days the board and commission meets because we all have different obligations that we've made within our communities, within our family structures. So I just wanna make sure that we could all make this work. I think it really has to, you know, have that footing. Do we want to take a break for a minute? Do we want to proceed? Well, I think uh, we need to ask uh, Johnny if, if, he, if he's willing to amend his motion for a, a, another night or if he's uh, stuck on Tuesday. I can amend for a different night. I'm fine with that. Um, okay, thank you. <clears throat> well, uh, Mayor, should we go ahead and ask him to, to amend it? Would you like to amend your e evening? I believe that Wednesday is the, the date that everybody's looking at, so Wednesday would be the, the date that I would amend it to. If that's the if he's amended it to Wednesday, then I call for the question. I'm going to try to make this motion and see if I do it correctly. I make a motion that council changes the regular meeting day from Mondays to Wednesdays. That's not correct? So the reason why we went ahead and when council approached staff to be able to go ahead and put this together because we had a motion by we had a request from one council member we had a second from another council is because this item cannot be done on a simple motion this requires an ordinance and two resolutions okay so what i will say is that um your ordinance is a first reading so it does take two readings and 30 days to implement. And so um, ask staff, you will have to direct us um, to change that from, so you'll do your first reading of the ordinance and direct us to bring back an ordinance that changes it to January. And rather than to taking action on the two resolutions tonight, you'll ask for them also to change to a Wednesday and we'll bring them back at the next meeting in which you can vote on it at the next meeting. Got it. The one thing that we need to do is we need to advertise for a public hearing. And in order to do so, we have to advertise that public hearing by the September 26th. Is that our last date we can advertise, Becky? It's in the packet, it's on item B. And so right now it's sort of publishing. And so what we wanna do is make sure we have that date so that we publish our public hearings on the right date and time. So what we'll do is you can do your first reading tonight and we can bring it back to the next meeting. The first reading of ordinance 716-22. It's a first reading of ordinance number 716-22, and then it would be a second reading that would take official action for, for 30 days. Then resolution number 1837 and resolution number 1838, you could either adopt them tonight, changing the date, or you could have them come back to the next meeting correct so that they would all be adopted at the same time with the same date that they are starting, which is 30 days after the date of adoption. Okay. So that's not a motion then, correct? Because it's just a reading. It's just a reading. It requires no motion. Yep. And, and so, so for me, I think it would make more sense to have then the two resolutions to come back at the same time and have it all done at the same time. 
That's my opinion. Okay, then we will just move on with a new vote at this time. Mayor, can you read the ordinance by title only? Ordinance number 716-22. An ordinance of the Town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, amending Title III of the Town Code, entitled Administration by Amending Section 3021, titled Regular Meetings. Item B is resolution number 1839-22. This is discussion approval disapproval of a resolution of the Mayor and Common Council of the Town of Florence, Arizona, a municipal corporation of Arizona, approving and authorizing the consent of the town to an assignment and assumption of district development, financing participation, waiver and intergovernmental agreement, Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District Number 1, approving and authorizing the execution and delivery of a first non-assessment bond related amendment to district development, financing participation, waiver and intergovernmental agreement. Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District Number 1 and approving and authorizing the execution of settlement agreement and release among the Town of Florence, Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District Number 1, CMR, CAS, er, Casa Grande, LLC, Roadrunner Resort, WHM, Merrill Ranch Investments, LLC, Merrill Ranch Owners Agents, LLC, Pulte Development Corporation and Pulte Home Company, LLC, declaring an emergency with an immediate effective date. Mr. Clifford Matisse. Thank you, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the council. As I mentioned before, this is related to the item we described in the litigation uh, against the district, but also required uh, is a consent by the town related uh, to some of the changed agreements that are mentioned in your staff report, those three agreements. The town must uh, essentially consent to those documents as well. All right, are there any questions or comments from council? Seeing no such movement, we need a motion. Make a motion to approve resolution number 1839-22. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. At this time, item 11 is our manager's report. Mayor and members of council, I only have one item for you tonight, and that is that um, council has approved us to go back out, update our solicitation for town manager. That will be out on the street this week. Um, we've also got a longtime manager who is assisting us with the process. We look forward to the hiring of our new town manager, and um, we stand by to assist with the process. I just want to make sure the public knew and, and that council's ready to move forward with that process. Thank you. Any questions from council? All right. This is our second call to the public. Call to the public. If you're online, if you could raise your hand at this time, if you're in person and you'd like to speak, um, please come forward. Uh, good evening again, uh, Madam Mayor, uh, Vice Mayor, Council Members, Jose Maldonado here again. Uh, I'm just here as uh, District Commander for the American Legion. We have a veteran stand down in Pinal County October 8th from 7 to 1. It's going to be in Coolidge on McCartney Road. This is like our fifth annual time doing it. We used to do them at the National Guard Armory for the longest time, and this will be our second year doing it out there in Coolidge. We're going to be having haircuts, uh, showers. Uh, there's going to be a couple of judges out there helping these vets that are either homeless or close to homelessness. And uh, more than welcome to, to, to come out there and see what we do. Uh, I've, been, I've been also invited some of the other uh, surrounding uh, town mayors and, and council members as well. Uh, and that's all I got. If we could just put the word out, I appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you.
Call to the council for current events only. Council Member Mendoza. The only thing I've got is the new book that the community has out in the community about all the different things that we have going on in town. If you haven't seen it, it's beautiful. Uh, it's very informative and lets you know what's happening this fall. So pick one up if you haven't. They're all over town. I picked mine up at Valentino's when I bought some pizza the other night. Council Member Neal. I have nothing. Council Member Rodriguez. I have nothing tonight, thank you. Council Member Anderson. Uh, yes, I'd just like to acknowledge the loss of Queen Elizabeth. She is or was one of the greatest statesmen in the world. She did a lot for the world. She did a lot for the United States. And uh, she made our, all of our lives so much richer. I just want to acknowledge that. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor? I had something and now I can't remember what it was. Of the uh, Alzheimer's. Um, yeah, I cannot for the life of me remember what I had, but I will remember it and bring it up next time. <laughs> All right. I had three bullet points that I just wanted to touch upon, and it's mainly planting some seeds that will come back to council in the future. The first is just the signage that we've noticed um, coming into the town. I know the old historic, I noticed it about a week ago coming down Main Street where it says Town of Florence, like the sign is kind of cracked and breaking. Um, as you come out from Main Street extension and then you turn left there, the town seal is the old town seal and it's also so severely sun faded that it's actually turning black so I just if council needs to approve funding for that or there's something that we need to do I would like to see our signage um, fresh updated this is a reflection of our community um, I also am looking forward to bringing our youth council back I don't know if um, any assistance is needed I'm willing to offer um, support, help serve on a committee, and oversee anything that needs to be done. I want to be able to re-engage and connect with our youth and having them active in their local government. And then lastly, um, I've heard from some citizens in the community talking about our Citizens Academy that we used to have and bringing that back because it helps educate our community of the different departments roles, responsibilities, and it helps engage them in a positive and productive manner. That is all I have at this time. Um, I do want to say thank you again for everybody for coming and attending the meetings because I believe participation is vital for a successful community. We do have an executive session this evening, so at this time we need a motion. Make a motion to adjourn to executive session. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, we are adjourned.